Hello, YouTube viewers. Welcome to my channel, Science to Technology. In today's show, Science Thursday, we're going to talk about freeze drying. Why it is so important? Well, it's basically, I have to say the same thing again and again. Uh, well, we need food. I'm pretty sure we all agree on that. But food don't last, meaning we can cook a meal. It's amazing meal, but here's the deal. The moment time starts to pass away, as in like one day, two day, three day, meals are like, nope, I'm out. Like meals spoil. So fundamentally, we reach a scenario where what the hell we have to do specifically with meal is like we can't preserve meals for long term and then there are many sensitive items specifically fruits and vegetables uh, those things are sensitive to heat meaning once you heat them up it's feel like hey i want to dry them so they can last many things can withstand heat very easily but majority of the foods specifically raw fruits don't like that and meaning not only it changes their structure it also changes their nutrition competitor it goes down so fundamentally what's the point of preserving a food if you are reducing its nutrition content so so many things are sensitive to heat. So we cannot use heat to just remove water. And why removing water is such a key important. That's why this word is freeze drying. Is that if you do not have water, you can have very long life up to 25 years. Now, why is that the case? Well, if you do not have water, you do not have a universal solvent in your food, meaning you do not have any place where things can act. Even if there is some microbe remaining surviving uh, system, it does not have fuel or does not have a place to do things to spoil your food. So if you remove water, almost everything becomes sterile, ironically so. So if you can remove uh, water from your system, long shelf life of course i'm i do not mean long shelf life as in like put it in a uh, desert sahara desert it's gonna survive life it's just like if you can put it in a dark basement without refrigeration is supposed to last very long time and uh, we also need a way to make emergency food because again natural disasters are a thing it happens sooner or later today or tomorrow it's gonna happen it's gonna happen to almost all of us so in those sort of time you want a food that is like i don't have to think about it it cannot be like a backup generator which you have to maintain every day it has to be like i put it there i invest money into it and that's it done it's there it's sorted uh, you want that like Bill Gates was also saying that before pandemic that like you're, you're supposed to have a uh, like almost a, a big jar almost a barrel and it would have like a ready to eat meal foods and all that jazz that you during pandemic or nuclear war you're gonna do that many people wish they had invested in that during the early stages of lockdown so we need some way of making emergency food and what the heck are we gonna do when we are in space you need a way to a reduce the weight that you are carrying to space and b a food that is like very easy to store because again Skylab did have the refrigerator but ISS does not have a dedicated food refrigerator sometimes they have used a experimental refrigerator as a food refrigerator but there is no such thing and again you want to design it in such a way that even if there is no refrigerator the equipment should last very long food should last very long and food for armed forces this line I will keep repeating so it is important thing and how the heck you eat it once you did the freeze drying how the heck you take this to make it a meal super easy open the package put hot water in and eat done done go home sweet dreams as simple as that it's super easy and again you do not even need like this sort of uh, uh, wrappers many people store in a glass jar as long as it's airtight so this is why we need this sort of technology so what's the scientific logic behind it? Well, it's very simple. We want sublimation, meaning what you studied about dry ice. Basically, dry ice goes from solid to gas without jumping to liquid. Well, again, carbon dioxide has a liquid phase. It's just that our atmospheric pressure is too low for that. So if you are in an environment where there's much higher ambient uh, pressure, of course, it will go to liquid. Now, water also has the same thing. Water can also do the same thing. That's why almost everything, like uh, be it element, be it compound, generally have a pressure and temperature diagram that looks something like this, where you have pressure going up and you have temperature going down. And it has all the stages, with solid, liquid gases. And there are weird points where you can have almost everything. For example, triple point. Why do we say triple point? Because it has solid, liquid gas at the same time. You go below that, you have uh, what we call a freeze drying point. And at that point in time, you reach a point of sublimation. Meaning if you have ice, and you heat it up a little bit, as in like your ice could be, let's say, minus uh, 20 degrees Celsius. You heat that puppy up to, let's say, 30 degrees Celsius, not even 100 degrees Celsius, 30 degrees Celsius. It's going to directly go heat. It directly goes from ice crystals to vapor without going to liquid stage. And why the heck we want that? Well, again, if directly goes from ice crystals to vapors, it does not cause damage. Because if it goes to liquid state, it, it dissolves thing. Again, universal solvent, it dissolves thing. If you are adding energy to do that, it's, it has high energy, it dissolves and ruins the structure of the food. Like, why the heck you can't uh, melt your ice cream to store it? Well, again, ice cream has a lot of air pockets. If you re destroy all the air pockets, it's no longer ice cream. It's just powder that you are eating. So again, why the heck powder does not taste as same as ice cream? That's the same point. 
it the structure of it the mo uh, molecular structure not molecular yeah uh, compound based structure of it, it has been destroyed that's why we have to freeze dry it only then you are like you are eating it you are like ha huh, this is ice cream but bit chalky so structure of the food must remain intact the only way to do that is like you freeze it in place and then you f create a scenario where water just eats out of there without destroying it without dissolving it without doing anything and we maintain uh, trying to do that with minimal heat minimum heat in some scenarios you may not even need it in some circumstances you like to i don't even need heat you just keep dropping the temperature low enough it reaches a point where it's like water is like i'm out or if you really want to do like large batch processing, then you may add little bit of heat. And I drew mean just little bit, not even 30, 40 degrees Celsius, maybe as little as 10 degrees Celsius. Depending on the food items that you are doing that, there will be a whole chart. Like it's the same thing that we used to do when we are talking about boiling water in room temperature. It's the same logic. We just change the pressure so much, almost raw vacuum, where it's like, bro, directly go from solid to gas, sublimate. Do not mix with anything. Do not destroy anything. Just go like leave without causing any damage and if you have no water and you have airtight storage equals long life and you can take almost any food you do not need to sterilize that food with gamma radiation it's gonna last for a very long time it's much much more cost effective so that's the logic behind it sublimation that's the key here you have liquids liquids uh, like it's the life blood of food but again that's the problem it's life blood life is there it will react to it you are like how the heck i make it sterile remove water from it how the heck you remove water freeze drying it basically put it in a vacuum chamber draw the air out of it and then tune the temperature in such a way that it freezes then you keep dropping the pressure and then you have sublimation state then you increase the heat a little bit voila water goes away some of the large uh, systems could have a system where tools that we utilize to do that could have a uh, mild heaters. Small ones generally do not have that heater systems most of the time. But if you are talking about large industrial, they may have a heater to speed up the process because these things does have one consequence. They take long time to achieve it as in like really, really long time. Like even the small unit could easily take 24 hours or even 48 hours to achieve true uh, freeze drying the state. That's why industrial ones are so big and expensive. And again, even with that, you're still going to consume minimum of one day. Like this thing is inherently slow. You cannot expedite this process. So what do you need? You need a strong vacuum chamber. That's your starting block. Then you need a refrigeration system that does go low temperature. Be mindful, a normal refrigeration system can go drop to that level. But because of the fact that we are supposed to store things that have liquid in them, we do not want the temperature to go that low. So even though the refrigerant can truly drop the temperature, we don't allow it to. Here, it's a different thing. We do allow temperature to go down. So depending on the use cases, it can go down really low, as in like minus 40 degrees Celsius. Then you also have a low temperature radiator, uh, uh, radiant heater. I put radiator heater. Radiant heater as in like something that infrared because again, it's inside a vacuum. So how the heck you gonna do the conduction? Generally, radiation heater is the best op or microwave. But generally, I have only seen radiant heaters for that. And you have a control system for temperature and pressure, obviously. And conveyor belt is used for large scale because this is good for like home uh, level use. This is for pharmaceutical or army kind of use where you have like even many uh, food items that you eat in a restaurant. Many of them have gone through this sort of process. And the fact that you do not know that, that's the whole point. That's how good these things are. If done properly, you would eat it and you will never think about it. Specifically with soups. So uh, conveyor, again, be mindful, but you have to handle that many trays. You want to batch process as quickly as possible. Uh, basically, SkyTrain is the best way of moving things around. So uses, again, it goes through the same thing. Store food for a long time without energy or degradation. This is critical. That's why we humans figured out the value of food very early on. And we figured out we have to uh, find ways to store that. Now, majority of way of storing without refrigeration was very crude way. Basically, we changed it to store it. Now, it did work, but it always compromised the quality. And that's why refrigeration was such a big deal. Then we come to refrigeration. Again, refrigeration is amazing. Now we can handle food for long duration, but it still has inherent limitation. At some point, it does not like, you know, hold up that well. Freeze drying is the next technology on this. So modifying to refrigerating to freeze drying, freeze drying is the final stage. We genuinely do not have any even uh, hope where we can strain, uh, you know, expand the life of food longer than that. I think uh, most people agree that's the upper limit. So that's the whole point. You do not need energy. And that's the thing. That's why you can have a barrel of food and it put, put in your basement. Like you, you can literally have to replace that puppy as little as like 10, uh, once every 10 year. Like that's how long life they can have. And if they are really top quality, 25 years. 
you can easily have that and be mindful after 25 years if the seals have not been damaged it still would be food it still would be edible it won't be toxic it still would be edible so it can be it's just that people don't prefer like beyond 25 years and armies are even armies are like bro i think we should circulate this puppy like five to eight years nobody tries to push it to that 25 years but it can be done and degradation is negligible it's like fresh of the farm versus fresh of the basically freezer it's like uh, the gap between them is mathematically microscopically tested and done through all the food labs it's negligible like you have to have very special tongue to say oh nutrition value dropped like you can tell a nutrition value dropped on a dehydrated food you can't tell nutrition drop on this puppy that's why again astronauts that's why we feed them to astronaut an army cannot fight without empty stomachs so core of many mres meals ready to eat is this and how the heck are you supposed to get hot water to rehydrate these things well uh, they have a basically chemical battery so to say basically two metal powders they put it put it in a basically water pouch water boils up because again inherently it's acting like a galvanic cell reacting and shorting out so creating a lot of heat hot water and that pouch is designed in such a way that you put it in center food pouch sub pouch would be on two sides it heats up voila you have good food without fire so you can directly enjoy this and best way to feed people in space there is another benefit of this because you are removing water assume future scenario or even iss when it had like maximum amount of people in it you have to carry a lot of food there but what if your food is freeze dried the weight goes down drastically like drastically you can freeze dry a pizza and you will be like dude is there any pizza without water you'll be shocked like you may think oh we are baking it and all that it does not have water it's like bro it has a lot of water so once you freeze dry it the weight goes down drastically low like low meaning you can ship one ton of food once you add water to it you can feed uh, like a uh, equivalent of three tons that's how big difference could be there now here's deal where the heck water comes from in space well water can be recycled even if you have water in your food your uh, basically kidneys uh, these puppy will drain those puppy and then you urinate and urine can be easily recycled so your total water circulation could be as high as 90 or 95 percent and you only have to bring food and uh, you do not have to carry equivalent amount of water that you would have carried if you are not doing freeze drying so it's a best way of feeding people in space and the best way we can we're gonna do this in like space hotels and all that jazz emergency food on earth that's why it's not a technology for army or um, you know basically space it's also useful for us you and us like imagine how uh, many of us would be so comfortable if during lockdowns all of us had this barrel which is like here's the barrel eat from uh, from this puppy for one month and all of the foods are top quality not like you know bare minimum top quality food so what we can expect in the future well reality is it's slowly becoming a household tool uh, because of the development of uh, basically microcontroller and the fact that vacuum pumps are becoming such a common thing nowadays is that you can buy things that are like this basically a, a small size dishwasher they're noisy because vacuum pumps are noisy but they can like work for uh, if you are in middle class you can afford that again it's around 2500 dollars but again it's a thing nobody would have believed you like few years ago like this will be a thing that people are buying and people are excited about it and there are now many companies that are doing this and some people's or restaurants they are building it on themselves it's inherently a dumb thing so it can be built and be mindful microcontrollers are no longer that complex as in complex as in like expensive wise they're like yeah you can just buy it you can use a basic arduino to control all those things so it's a becoming a household tool that's a very big shift from industrial technology used for pharmaceutical industry and armies and space technology to like yeah i have it in my house I'm like what's the point well imagine this way let's say you have a outhouse where it's like you go once a year how the heck you stock up food there you don't you cook your meal freeze dry it and pack it up put it in a basement make sure it's watertight make sure it's airtight and forget about it like how long you can forget about it? few years so you're gonna have that so that's why it's a very useful tool for natural disaster and people have done multiple research where they're like if you have a natural disaster if you can give people good food i do not mean bare minimum is like tastes like garbage i do not mean that like it's a good for sustaining but tastes bad like in those sort of time when people are stressed out like due to earthquake tsunami and all that jazz if you can give them a good packed meal it directly elevates them like elevates as in like it allows their psychology to come down to base level is like i got this i'm gonna use my brain to solve problem i'm not, not gonna freak out it's important people have learned this the hard way that if you can feed people you can even the worst situation you can handle it and again that's why armies run on food like it's super easy oh i have ammunition i have fuel what about food sir if you don't have food not gonna do much well specifically like you would be surprised how important food is to armies 
So for natural disaster, it's really important. Like if you have good, uh, let's say, industrial capacity of manufacturing, let's say a, ba a big situation happen, you can just mass produce it and distribute it. And it can save, like it can give people time to like, okay, I'm not gonna starve. Okay, I have a good food. Okay, let me think, let me figure out what can I do to communicate, what I can, like it's important. And pharmaceuticals runs on this, like flat out, how the heck you can, uh, if you read mini medicine packets, you must have noticed they say something weird. It's like, cool and dry place. Okay, how the heck you mean it? Because it is real. Majority of the uh, fluids that you see in the system generally have either had alcohol or had water going through it in process one way or the other. So how the heck you remove it? Water, because again, it does take 100 degrees Celsius to boil that puppy up. You don't, you freeze dry that. So pharmaceuticals run like continuous batches of this. Like majority of medication does go through uh, freeze drying one uh, point or the other. So it's a must have pharmaceutical drip because like it's one of those technology that we don't think about. But if your country can truly deal with this, it can take care of its army, it can take care of its space technologies, it can take care of emergency readiness, it can take care of pandemics. It's one of those things that you do not think about. But if your country has good infrastructure with this, it's like country is like, I got this. And again, it also helps as a, like a good way to store again, especially if you have that, like pizza, people are storing pizzas in this. I, imagine like you have a pizza and you're like, hey, instead of throwing it away or overeating right now, what if I just preserve it? And eat it like a biscuit uh, when like again many times people don't like to uh, rehydrate their like to it tastes fine enough because majority of taste is still there so like eat it like a biscuit in the later days rather than overeating and all of your uh, basically single people who are like hey i on, on only on saturday or sunday i have time to cook meals cook meals freeze dry it and voila you have quality meals for whole week so it's kind of amazing that this sort of technology is becoming a household tool and thanks to microcontrollers, we can actually have some amazing results out of this. Most of these things can do freeze drying in 24 hours. So this was my presentation on freeze drying and the importance of it. Hopefully you have liked it, learned from it. In that case, please click the like button, share it amongst your friends. That will help me a lot. If you didn't like it, didn't enjoy it, I urge you to press dislike, press it twice to show me extra disappointment. Please leave a comment because I do try to reply to all of them. Subscribe, press the bell icon if you're free. And as always, thanks for watching.